right, well, I'm just out here on a quick walk to enjoy God's beautiful creation. Obviously, it's raining quite a bit. One thing that we all know about when it's raining is that this is great for plants, right? We know that for the plants, this is something that's gonna allow them to grow. We know that the grass is gonna turn super green, right? That trees are gonna start to sprout their leaves or grow new ones. Now, the thing that we know about plants is that they need water in order for photosynthesis to occur. Now, where is photosynthesis happening? Well, we know photosynthesis is happening way up here, especially, mostly, in these leaves. But that's where we need the water. And most of the water, as it comes down, is hitting the ground, right? We know even down here, piling up into a big old puddle. So how is it that plants can move that water that's to, on the ground all the way back up into their leaves, right? You have to imagine that they have to counteract a lot of gravity. So how is it that plants actually uptake all of this water? What's up everybody, Mr. Roast here. This is Mr. Roast, and as many of you know, he's big on strength. And how do you increase strength? Well, you push things against gravity over and over and over again. From the garage, we're gonna lift some heavy weights, but it takes a lot of energy to lift weights, doesn't it? For all resistance training, you have to push against gravity. That's what I'm about to do here. That's right though, I got lots of energy for it. How do I get energy? Macronutrients through my nutrition, specifically carbohydrate and fat are gonna give me the energy. Proteins, the other macronutrient, that helps me recover and build stronger, bigger muscles. Let's go. All right, so from those macronutrients that we talked about, carbohydrates are gonna help me lift heavy weight for short periods of time. Short energy bursts. Carbs, uh, perfect for this. I get my carbs through food. But, think about plants. Uh, plants just gonna eat carbohydrates all day? I don't think so. Let's find out how plants move water up and down those stems all day long. What kind of energy do they use? Now, before we can understand how plants are actually taking up water, we need to understand that water has some very special characteristics. Now, one of those characteristics is that water is very sticky. Now, what that means is water is attracted to a lot of other different kinds of molecules. Now, one of those ways that we can see how water is sticky is even just by looking at a drop of water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little drop of water here on the table and use my uh, action camera here. If we take a look at this drop that's on the table, you can see that it's kind of round. It doesn't sit perfectly flat. Now the reason it forms kind of that round shape is because all of the water molecules inside, they're kind of sticking to each other and because they're all attracted to each other and it's a, that's that special characteristic of water that we mentioned. Now that's called cohesion. It means that the water molecules, right, co meaning kind of together, right, so they are within a group of water molecules, they're all going to be attracted to each other, they're going to stick to each other. Now, another way that we can see that water is sticky is that it will actually stick to or be attracted to other surfaces or other molecules as well. And you can see that most commonly, especially when you are pouring water even into a cup, right? If you take a really narrow cup or even a tube that you have at home, if you pour some water inside, you'll notice that the water doesn't just sit perfectly flat. In fact, you'll notice that it kind of does a bit of a dip. And you can see that here in my example within this test tube. Now, if you look carefully within this test tube, you'll notice that, like I said, the water doesn't sit perfectly straight. It dips down a little bit inside of the test tube. Now, I want us to draw a picture together in order to better understand how that meniscus forms. So, just in your notes, I want you to draw along with me here. So let's start with by just drawing a part of our test tube here. Now, 
Like I said, the water inside of that test tube, it doesn't just sit perfectly across like that. Instead, it creates this meniscus, okay? So it rises up on either side of the test tube, right, all the way around. So the reason for that is because we have all of these water molecules, right, which we'll just draw as little circles. But what they do is some of these water molecules, they're sticking to the side. Now, when they stuck to each other, we call that cohesion. And when they're sticking to something else, we call that adhesion. Now, that's really significant because this meniscus shows us that water is going to stick to other surfaces. But what if we took this test tube and we made it really, really small? So I'm going to draw that. Let's say we imagine we make it really, really narrow. Okay, we, we bring those walls closer together. Now, this is what we can call a capillary. Okay, capillary. And what capillary means, capillary just means narrow tube. In fact, in your body, some of your blood vessels we refer to as capillaries because they are so narrow. That is where we have most of our nutrient exchange going on in all of our tissues. But what we're talking about here is if we imagine we have this narrow tube, we call it a capillary that has water in it. Now what you can do is you could actually put a capillary, let's say, let's say you took a big tub of water and you put this capillary inside, okay? What would actually happen is water would start to rise up the tube. The reason for that is because these water molecules, they stick to each other and they stick to the walls, they stick to each other, they stick to the walls, and they basically crawl all the way up this tube. And that is called capillary action. And what capillary action is, is it's the ability of a liquid, right, in this case water, to flow without any energy without any external force. In fact, oftentimes capillary action is going to be working against an external force like gravity. Now, I can actually show you an example of that right now, and you could even try it at home, because in fact this happens more often than you would think. So imagine that you're sitting at home and you accidentally spill some water on the table. Oh no, right, water sitting on the table. So what you do is you go and you take some paper towel or a cloth or a Kleenex, right, I have some Kleenexes here, some tissue, in order to wipe it up. Now, before I actually just go in and wipe it up, I'm going to show you how we can see this capillary action occur. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the tissue just like this, I'm going to place it into the water, so just the bottom of the tissue is touching the water. And what you'll notice is that the water will actually start to crawl up the Kleenex. And you can see already that the water is rising up in the Kleenex, even though those parts of the Kleenex, higher up, aren't actually touching the table where the water is. The water molecules, they're starting to enter into the gaps of the Kleenex, or it's attracted to the Kleenex itself, filling these gaps and rising up through capillary action. If I held it here even longer, it would continue to rise, but you can see already it's already risen a couple of inches. Now this is what plants are using all of the time. Plants are always using this capillary action. So you can imagine that we know that the leaves of a plant is where photosynthesis is occurring. We know that photosynthesis requires water for plants to in turn create glucose, okay? Now, once those leaves are using up that water, the amount of water in the leaves decreases. Now we can also lose water in our leaves through transpiration. And transpiration is when the pores of a leaf, they open up in order to let carbon dioxide in for photosynthesis, to let oxygen out that it's created. Sometimes water vapor will escape as well, which will also cause the, the leaf to lose water. So the problem here is that the amount of water has decreased in the leaf, but we need more water in that leaf. So where does that water come from? Well, the water comes from the stem. So the water that's in the stem, right, through capillary action, it travels up into all the leaves. Now, while the water in the stem is starting to disappear, so water from the roots starts to move up the stem. And then that in turn causes water from the soil to move into the roots, and that's sort of process called osmosis, which you'll see in the slides after this video. Now I'm going to show you another example of where we can actually see this capillary action moving water from one place to another. As you can see, I have one beaker on the left that has some water in it. I put some red food coloring in so you could see it very clearly. And then I have a beaker on the right that has no water in it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tissue and I'm going to, I'm going to fold it up 
and I'm gonna have one end in the beaker on the left and one end on the, in the beaker on the right. And as I place it inside, you'll see something pretty significant start to occur. Now it takes a while. In fact, I'm gonna speed this video up so you can see what's actually happening. But what will happen is the water that's in the left beaker will start to travel up through capillary action through the Kleenex, and then it will be deposited in the beaker on the right. Now, over a long enough period of time, this will continue to happen until the amount of water in each beaker is exactly the same, right? And we call this equilibrium. Now think about what these parts of this experiment are actually demonstrating. You can imagine that the beaker that starts as empty on the right, we can imagine that's the leaf, right? The leaf is decreasing water and we need more water there for photosynthesis to occur. The beaker on the left is representing the water that's in the roots that has come in through osmosis. Now, as I place the Kleenex in, that's representing the stem. And so what's happening is through capillary action, the stem is able to pull water from the roots all the way up against gravity into the leaves. And this is how plants take up water without expending a bunch of energy. So be sure that you've drawn the pictures that I drew in this video, as well as taken down the definitions of the key terms that were mentioned.